an approach to a child who has had severe recurrent vomiting. So, uh, we admitted 11 years uh, girl who was admitted in 2013 with the history of uh, uh, recurrent intermittent vomiting. Almost she had 20 episodes which required uh, multiple admissions over two years. And there was definite asymptomatic period in between the episode and each episode lasts for one to two days. Characterization of episode was the vomiting was stereotypical. Always it used to preceded by headache, dizziness, nausea, which used to last for uh, one hour, followed by vomiting, which was around initially to start with, it was very uh, high frequency vomiting, eight to 10 times per hour. To start with non-bilious, then terminal uh, vomitus were bilious, non-projectile, and uh, she, uh, she requires a hospitalization most of the times, almost 75 to 80 percent of time she required hospitalization, and there was dramatic response uh, in one to two days. So I think, uh, okay, go on, go on. And there was no history of uh, associated, there was no history to suggest any intestinal, uh, history to suggest of intestinal obstruction in the form of abdominal distension. There was no any uh, convulsions, lethargy, altered sensorium, or history of any mental retardation or developmental delay. And there was no history of any blurring of vision, or personality changes, or early morning headache. So I think very beautifully presented history within just one slide, and that graph seems to tell you what the child has been going through. Dr. Prakash, would you want to take... Uh, audience. Audience? <laughs> <laughs> Done. So that is true. Session is over. <laughs> <laughs> migraine. Somebody, somebody has thought about migraine because uh, it's preceded by headache. Okay. How often do we find migraine coming to the hospital 20 times in two years? Doctor, cyclical vomiting, okay. There is certainly a cyclical pattern of vomiting here. There is vomiting for one to two days, one to two months of interval free period and this is repeating again and again. So it's a good thought that this, yes? Intermittent volvulus. So other causes of cyclical patterns of vomiting should also be thought of. So cyclical vomiting syndrome though is a very good MCQ answer. We will have to get down to see whether this child actually has cyclical vomiting. Nine out of ten chances I agree. There must be because child cannot go uninvestigated for 20 hospital admissions. So common sense answer is definitely cyclical vomiting syndrome. But we need more, I'm sure, information on abdominal epilepsy. We will go into that aspect also. As part of the history, is there a family history of migraine? That's one thing that we need so to family know. Excellent. History, uh, father is having... Uh, was having anxiety disorder and mother and mother's sister <laughs> both were having migraine. See, thing is, my child gets admitted 20 times in two years, even I will develop anxiety disorder. <laughs> so, but yes, the history of migraine, history of migraine, maternal history of migraine, I'm sure is important. I wanted one history before you go on to the family history and that is, what happened to the weight, what is the mother or the family saying about the weight of the child? No, Not there, was, about there was no growth coming. failure, there was, she was, uh, weight was normal. You have the weight parameters, weight and height just show. So, there was, on examination, there was no any growth failure. Weight and uh, height were in normal centiles. And there was no any recent uh, weight loss. And she was afebrile. Uh, at the time of admission, she had some, uh, she came after admitting from outside. So, there were no any evidence of dehydration. No paler, jaundice, clubbing or pedal edema and uh, there was no papilla edema. So, these findings are during the symptom-free interval? No, just she came. Soon after the episode? Soon after the episode. Okay, okay. And there could be one, see, they are, may I, may I, Dr. Srinivas? Yes, sir. <laughs> what they are asking, see, somebody said it could be a volumes. What is your defense? Why you are saying that you are not agreeing that, that this is volumes? Number one. Instead of then, I am saying that there is a CNS tumor sitting in the yes, brain. Yes, 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 yes. The child is having vomiting now. Now you defend that. Not that it is there, but you try to defend We will, sir. We have still 25 minutes. Pardon? We have some more slides than 25 minutes. We are oh, coming okay. there, huh? <laughs> so, but you never mentioned about abdominal pain, right? There was no history of abdominal pain. No, no. no. It really takes away the idea of volvulus. Correct. And retching. 
especially if you are no retching no volvulus it will be a gastric volvulus yes, organo axial or mesotraxial and patient will have severe retching actually retching and vomiting pain abdomen may or may not be that that will be a minor thing so that is not thing second thing is if uh, in case of severe forget cns intracranial tumors giving rise to repeated vomiting in a patient but here the course of vomiting is different here in that situation will be persistent progressive uh, with headache will be very important manifestation of cns tumor giving rise to no no, no. Ah, yes, examination they have examined no papillary no, edema which is here the pattern is i think in between the patient is absolutely normal so that takes you away from a pathology so but that that aspects of the history have to be discussed here yeah yeah see the thing is so, when he is presenting the history of 2 years duration and showing the beautiful yes. graph from 2011 to 2013 mm. when we see in 2013 is very easy to diagnose correct correct but it's very difficult when we see in 2011 and 12 and when we are still struggling with this is not been done that is not been done because in 2013 he would have had all the tests that are required to be done and then come to you with no diagnosis and then it's easy to make a diagnosis so they should have been a list of no history of this along with all this this is what i wanted no, i'll i'll discuss okay. in we will we'll, we'll come to that go on. Okay. Go, on. go on once can, again emphasize can i just point one thing against the surgical is the nausea every time the child gets a, a nausea yeah. a one nausea. hour before Absolutely. so that takes you little away from any of the surgical and excellent the sort of excellent so these are the point see there's a free discussion dr seema no restriction no barriers anybody can ask any question because the ultimate aim is clarification and understanding of a thing the question to dr yacha one important point he was trying to elicit and say that retching is a very important feature that is seen in gastric valvulus yes. can it occur in other conditions also retching can occur sometimes you may have retching because of other non specific causes also but if it is episodic pain retching vomiting then you must think of a valvulus or but here that is not a question i think let us concentrate more on this story of anxiety disorder and migraine because we have another test in front of but retching is also described in cyclical vomiting that is why i wanted to ask yes ah, yes it can, yes. It can occur, mm. no doubt about that it can occur but the definition of cyclical vomiting in the absence of any other known anatomical cause is the definition so uh, systemic examination did not uh, had any uh, significant finding central nervous system examination was normal abdomen was soft no any abdominal distension and uh, normal bowel sounds uh, there was no any succussion splash so here we have a 11 year girl with uh, episodic uh, uh, starts with non bilious vomiting requiring hospitals multiple times and uh, this uh, vomiting preceded by stereotypical symptoms uh, in the form of headache nausea and dizziness which last for 1 hour and absolutely asymptomatic interval in between the episodes and uh, family history of migraine in mother and anxiety disorder in father dr vaidya you have to open the box and say what all things you may broadly think of sorry what are the possibilities you would broadly think of when you get a child with recurrent vomiting especially periodic like this i mean cyclical vomiting is not the first thing that should ideally come to your mind ever there are so many other common causes for instance <coughs> as somebody mentioned about abdominal pathology like a valvulus or obstruction then you may think of uh, but here the profiling is so perfect here you have said that the child has got stereotypical that is yes. the word that that is very particularly there yes. plus asymptomatic intervals and i can't believe that a child for 2 years has not been subjected to an exhaustive battery of this So if that those tests have not revealed anything, and you have a word like stereotypical migraine in the mother, anxiety in the father, and asymptomatic intervals, and a well-grown child, I think you have the perfect textbook picture of cyclical vomiting only. Absolutely. Excellent. Is there a history of menstrual history? Because girls cyclical yes, vomiting usually as quite often is. comes at the time of menstruation yeah the menstrual menstrual is a precipitating event but in this child uh, she was not uh, achieved she did not achieved uh, what what other conditions should we think of which can cause the cyclical pattern of vomiting uh -huh. <laughs> you i'm i'm coming to the next question you, you want okay what are the psychological uh, what are the causes that looking at it as a 11 year old girl okay the girl factor 
after 11 year old typically entering her teens early there are no you know as such physiological causes for it okay i would definitely go into the psyche of this because the father having anxiety disorder the anxiety can be transferred very easily onto the child weight is again on the 50th percentile it's not very higher or very low so sure. there are a lot of psychological causes also which can bring about this what common psychological causes do you encounter stress, there can be anxiety there can be anorexia nervosa there can be bulimia nervosa there can be somatization 11 year old maybe having learning disability uh mental retardation has been ruled out so obviously it's not <coughs> mr usually mrs don't give vomiting and all because they don't understand the psychology of the situation but definitely a iq test or maybe the reading writing to see if there are any triggers like a conversion disorder where there is a secondary gain for the child to do it yes. how often do they go to the extent of getting hospitalized for 20 times in your experience uh, episode and she's hospitalized so she's missing out on her exam ah. because she's hospitalized okay so it sounds more like that okay okay and you i i remember you mentioned 11 year old 11 year old beyond what age do you start thinking that this child is no longer innocent this child may act or play or have a secondary <laughs> game um okay one point over here a ah. lot of somatizers uh, really don't know that they are somatizing you know the rat race is so high it's like the child wants to do it but the stress is so much so the headache again over here maybe a lot of thoughts in her head giving her a headache where one point she just can't take the stress and vomiting is one escape that the brain can use you know to save her out of the situation so uh, sounds more psychological sorry okay uh, the other the other important point one if you question i want to just for huh. don't take it otherwise in today's world who doesn't have stress Uh, so but the kind of stress that uh, children go through nowadays uh, sometimes it's beyond our understanding also you know i mean the way they get compared the way if they are in higher level schools uh, we don't know you know what school what curriculum she is going absolutely to. It's quite difficult is it that the anxiety threshold is higher for them or lower for them it's more expectations from themselves and more of their parents and the society around 11 year old girl typically growing up wants to be like you know priyanka chopra or sushmita sen something so full points taken we need to look at the yeah but they no, no. really have better coping mechanisms sure oh. so so point we have taken we need to look at possible stressors triggers in their social environment school environment and family environment yeah. before making a diagnosis of an organic etiology as well where there is no definitive investigation to say this is it so therefore before on that definitely we have to look into that aspect i always believe that if you have a are you meaning to say that uh, every child who comes with cyclical episodes of vomiting should go through a psychological because if you examine a no, child no 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 i think i think But but no 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 but the other way around anybody who's undergone 20 hospitalizations at some point of time will undergo a psychological evaluation <laughs> no either because they are finding it difficult the parents will come and yes, tell you why you are telling me this diagnosis subject anybody to a psychological evaluation they'll find something wrong no 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 <laughs> no 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 <laughs> i'm talking about a 13 year old who's sick <laughs> no, any 13 no, no. year old see, who repeatedly sick so you know the parents get to us just and they are like question. you know something sure. is wrong every time exam aata hai to you know he just throws up or something like that but this is quite severe right. okay and every psychological test has a scoring system has a percentile yes. the child has to match that level for me to give a diagnosis L- i can't just give a diagnosis because i feel like it and like ultrasound with clinical correlation ha <laughs> would a would a psychologically triggered vomiting really need hospitalization so many times yes and usually they are given just one drug and they settle down yeah, but like they hospitalization so many times the no no i think now that is what i said clinical correlation sir Sorry, so what that, that is what i said clinical correlation see there are occasions when we do have children coming into hospital we give them one 5 ml of normal saline and they become better 
so we 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 have to look into there is a so that is why we are a conglomeration of pediatricians psychologists pediatric gastroenterologists solve this case half half a time go on is over. so sir half the time is there sir so differentials we considered first first is anatomical causes malrotation with mid gut valvulus however we don't have colic abdominal pain gastric valvulus present predominantly with intense retching with or without vomiting and uh, annular pancreas also presents uh, with duodenal obstruction pain distension and so having said this to the panelists would you definitely investigate for an anatomical cause before you make a label of a cvs yes, right and what investigations to rule out anatomical cause yes. would be your choice of investigation see here it is a non bilious vomiting which means there is something which is proximal to the second part of the duodenum which might be a valvulus which might be a uh, i would say uh, there may be a gastric outlet obstruction but the features are not really suggestive of that i would not really go for intense investigations in this patient at the best i may do an upper gi endoscopy in this patient to be satisfied that everything is normal inside and uh, once that is ruled out then certainly one would go for the cvs or chronic vomiting syndromes i, 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 I would surely do an mri in this child yeah. uh, probably just a any child with this barium profile. swallow and a follow through day, I yeah i i would have thought maybe something uh, you would have put barium as a first line yes, investigation also, beyond, before barium because if it is a non bilious vomiting d2 i can examine easily and finish it off in 3 minutes 4 minutes time but if it's, it's a functional <laughs> thing Sir, yeah, if it's a functional thing, how a endoscopy is going to sort yes, out a functional yes, thing? Yes, yes. There have been there have been two occasions in my personal experience where I burnt my fingers without doing a barium and going and doing an What endoscopy. In one, of course, they were not this 11-year-old presenting with two-year history. They were three-year-olds and they were five-year-olds. In one, I found a gastric valvulus with a diaphragmatic rent and a diaphragmatic hernia going in with event ration. that child had not even undergone and uh, the child typically presented with only vomiting younger, younger children younger children younger children very, younger very children very young child young child always anatomic and the other barium is a better model t for okay no doubt about that we had recently one who had eventration of diaphragm and the bowel sounds could be heard here actually in the lung okay when we were auscultating there were bowel sounds so we immediately in our bed said that they have got eventration or a diaphragmatic hernia okay. a younger child anyway you go to the other other doctor why they wanted you wanted to do a other, mri some point of time i think you have to rule out an intracranial cause and you have to do a mri brain that's what that's my personal yes so uh, right okay so, so and uh, second the mri parents are slight different because this is the cyclic pattern yeah, no, i think uh, sir we have to discuss this case pain and headache is a very important matter sir the case was as you said solved in the first slide pardon case was solved in the first slide Yes. so i think now we are discussing like we saw this child in 2011 and 2012 because diagnosis is easy in 2013 let's go absolutely agreed typically see it in a age group older child an adolescent or a pre adolescent where we see this much more common i think the more common thing we see with repeated vomiting is malrotation and it is very often missed and i mm. think i would definitely want to rule out malrotation before i ever think of a diagnosis of cyclical vomiting and malrotation Point is taken. not uncommon very very often missed point taken that's why we thought we will have to include the uh, and, uh, barium uh, then uh, other differentials uh, yep so malrotation can be easily differentiated by just a nice ultrasonography not always that smb smb axis yeah. smb smb is not always sensitive sir okay. if smb smb is abnormal <laughs> then there is a chance that you will have malrotation ultrasonography okay. malrotation will present to you with bilious vomiting pain abdomen there are two components lax bands in the duodenum and second thing is the pain abdomen as a result of volvulus or the a uh, valvulus of the cecum is free so we have two manifestation then here we have got non bilious vomiting we are sure about it but certainly your point is very valid all anatomical causes have to be ruled out before you label actually cvs sir so, so would you do a ammonia in this child ammonia for very very child. good go to the next uh, next we'll slide go to the next very good next slide that is her question so third group of disorders she is very passionate about disorders. metabolic usually the before the slide men go ah uh, yes okay 
So third group, so, third group of disorders are <laughs> metabolic disorders, <laughs> and uh, there are very long list of uh, conditions which can uh, present as a recurrent attacks of vomiting. However, the dominant manifestation is coma. They present with co coma, Our lethargy, alter que sensorium. Question to Dr. Seema, out the, see, what are the metabolic conditions that can present only with recurrent vomiting that you would suspect? FAOD, the first one that you've written is they, ha they do discuss FAOD as in the differential diagnosis of repeated vomitings. The other one that I have seen myself, and there's one case that you've written in the footnotes, is fructose 1,6 diphosphatase. Mm. This was a child, five-year-old, came to us with just this diagnosis, with just this presentation Even of repeated we vomiting, have same case, going into dehydration, and also having a little altered sensorium. And we yeah. just took the fructose out of his di life, and now the child is absolutely all right. He's going back to school. So in a child with recurrent vomiting. And yes, there was a, when, when we saw the patient a little in detail, there was mild hepatomegaly. Exactly count. same case hmm. has been uh, diagnosed so, in our hospital. Go to the next slide, show quickly. So good. So this is 11 year old, but all the same. We will take into point that in recurrent vomiting, metabolic should be considered this is, in younger age. This okay. Is the Abdominal pain is missing, yeah, madam, here. Yeah. Diabetic ketosis will present with severe abdominal pain, mimicking even for diarrhea <laughs> and vomiting. Go on, go on. Okay. So other causes uh, like acute intermittent porphyria, diabetic ketosis, pancreatitis, appendicitis, these all present predominantly with pain abdomen. So the final differential we are left out with cyclical vomiting syndrome where the uh, symptoms are stereotypical inter, uh, intermittent. However, di this is a diagnosis of exclusion. One has to rule out organic causes. Yeah, I think uh, that is well said. It's a diagnosis of exclusion, so invariably all the doubts that are there in everybody's mind, at some point of time everybody will do the investigation and then finally give a label. These okay. are the investigations we did in our patient. So first, uh, uh, with the etiology, considering etiology anatomic causes, we did barium swallow. And meal follow through, that was normal. Ultrasound abdomen, normal SMV, SMV yeah, axis. Yeah, faster, then faster. CNS, CT scan was done, that was normal. Ultrasound uh, also did not show any uh, renal abnormality. Metabolic functions, liver function tests were normal. And these are all the various uh, metabolic conditions. No, no, go back. LFT and ammonia was also normal, no? Doctors. Yeah, next. LFT is normal. And these are all the various conditions which can lead to. Uh, recurrent uh, coma, ataxia, vomiting. So we did metabolic workup. One is we did uh, uh, arterial blood gas analysis. pH was normal, urine ketones negative. And uh, then we did ammonia. Ammonia was normal, blood sugars normal, lactate were, yeah. uh, was also normal. One so point we, to think in this child is that all of these things need to be done when the child is symptomatic and not when the child is asymptomatic because you can have intermittent metabolic conditions which will be completely normal. So <laughs> When the child is well, doing a metabolic screening and saying it is normal does not rule out a metabolic problem. And any person who is having a metabolic problem presenting with vomiting will obviously be a very, very mild metabolic disorder because any serious metabolic disorder would have presented in within two, three years of age itself. One mild elevation of ammonia lactate can occur uh, in the periods of stress and high protein intake. Okay. So, uh, Nasfegan in 2008, uh, described the uh, criteria. So all the criteria must be there. So at least five attacks in any interval or minimum of three, inter, uh, three attacks during uh, six months period should be there, which was there in our case. Episodic attacks of intense nausea and vomiting, which last for one to 10 uh, days and occurring at least one week apart, which was also there in our case. And uh, symptoms were stereotypical. Uh, and uh, vomiting during attacks occurs at least four times. So we had around eight to ten times in first uh, hour this child used to vomit. And uh, in between absolutely uh, asymptomatic period. And again, after investigation, we fairly ruled out uh, all other causes. So this is fairly very, very stringent criteria for someone to meet all six criteria. You have to do many of the tests and they have to have this typical aura and the typical nausea and vomiting. And there should be stereotypical pattern and complete normalness in between. And may I at this point of time also ask the clinicians, we always think as pediatricians, if the baby 
has school avoidance then we tend to call you more often whereas if the child is unwell for two days that the day he is well he wants to go back to school then we don't call you very often <laughs> then you should see the days why he is avoiding or which days is he avoiding no absolutely Sometimes no but when he is really unwell what do we mean is as pediatricians we tend to have a fair Uh, at least about 50% of your clinical psychological acumen we will have and that's why we keep calling you we love clinical psychologists as gastroenterologists a number of this recurrent abdominal pain vomiting everything has a lot of psychological basis so in that we have as one of the very important criteria is school avoidance so there is there is a tendency the child is well like you said with temporal correlation we tend to call you do you see that in your practice too recently in last 2 to 3 years a uh, lot of them come with vomiting stomach pains and we started seeing seizures you know the child is in the school 12 years completely normal all of a sudden throws up pseudo seizures pseudo seizures okay and there is mri done eeg done there is absolutely no root cause for it and this we usually see with 11 12 year olds because academics gets difficult but they are smart enough you know the iq is good enough so they will try to avoid coming to school those days when there is some evaluation you know the other days they will happily go to school and now with icsc and all these curriculums they have these periodic evaluations rather than you know like 10 15 days of testing so it's typically like maths is difficult or english is difficult so i'll avoid that and you know i'll be in the hospital one day i'm back and then but it's not happening by them knowing it's more unknowing so a lot of counseling has to be done very well said very well said so they are very intelligent in certain things and not so intelligent in certain, certain things and median intelligence the, like us uh, is best on uh, cyclical <laughs> vomiting syndrome prodrome is very common family history of migraine is often seen It just one more thing i wa- i want to add is that the, in the examination as pediatricians once we've seen this child and we suspect that there's no organic cause we must look for one more thing and that is Sex, you know abuse child yes. abuse we should not miss out on the only any telltale signs of child abuse mm-hmm. can i, I add that, that, that was sure, not sir. one thing we sometimes forget is to take the blood pressure every child with vomiting one must we take have the taken blood because pressure intermittent so. rise of blood pressure can be a cause of yeah pheochromocytoma vomit. can also okay. present with intermittent uh, as she rightly put when we do the assessments with such kids uh, we hmm. we have markers for picking up trauma and when we are doing the assessment we pick up some sexual abuse many a times in the family itself and then we go back to that and the vomiting and all that stops over a period of time so okay. abuse is definitely something to so cvs also said symptoms mm. you don't have sufficient time now. yes sir what is so the st- current uh, guideline on the management of these cases so we uh, we manage this child uh, with 10% dextrose one and a half times and dondensetron lorazepam for sedation and this is uh, abortive medication and for prophylaxis we started uh, amitriptyline so one is here so one is breaking so one is definitely breaking that episode of intense vomiting i think it is very difficult to control that intense and severe vomiting that you have to resort to actually sedating the child so that's the only maybe way and sometimes people have even used to propofol sedation to basically put the child to some intense sleep so that the child forgets that child has to vomit and uh, once the vomiting starts our experience is that it's very difficult to control so everybody goes back home with some kind of a protocol because they can develop the cvs after they get diagnosed at your institute to any place during travel anywhere and anywhere they go they should know the moment the vomiting starts what to do so they go invariably with a protocol and they they give that immediately the first thing they come they immediately give them one shot of ondensetron put them in a dark room put them with uh, not much of uh, stimulation with light sounds etc and give one immediate dose of lorazepam to be followed by subsequent doses there are some institutes which even follow dihyd diphenhydramine around the clock but it's not available iv in our uh, country and uh, in spite of this they may continue to vomit for another 24 48 hours and only then come off and the second phase i think is basically yes, prophylaxis regarding this dehydration part you should explain 10% dextrose has to be given it has been during seen the that there is attack, some during the acute attack fluids have to be given you see 1.5 times required iv fluids important and whenever they start with a prodrome like situation in a known case then they should start actually with or uh, and the, they can take at home also this on a strong medication so that has to be stressed the milder variety certainly yeah. certainly will go back yeah, home yeah, and be shall not ask one thing i think there are three phases which you have to understand one in, one is that aura yes. 
if you tackle the patient during ara yes. you can avoid the mm. attack yeah, yeah. if you have you know started treating once uh, patient is having full attack then you can't avoid mm. it and third phase is the maintenance phase so ara phase during attack and also during Correct. maintenance phase this is uh, this i mean this one oh, has I to follow very, that yeah. is what i was yeah. emphasizing really at and that point of time they so the can i comment on that case because if uh, the message goes across that in every patient we have to do barium studies and we have to do mri and so on i think we are seeing so many cases of cyclical vomiting being a referral boys and therefore possibly i think we have to have a protocol on this because simple investigation which i ask for the patient of cyclical vomiting where clear cut history is there one is that you have to have a cbc liver function test scrft and then possibly upper gi endoscopy and ultrasound and if something abdominal anatomical defects you have to rule out possibly x ray abdominal erect and spine i think this much of work up for a cyclic or vomiting enough. is good enough Sir, and over and over yeah, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. over and above <laughs> over and above fundus examination and also metabolic like serum ammonium lactate and blood sugar levels this much of work is good enough rather than going for elaborate work up until you have after for and try to understand for intestinal obstruction valvulus you will have some parameters to suggest Correct. in a patient what? not be this is not a for since 2011 she is vomiting and vomiting and vomiting this will not a normally growing history of migraine the uh, mother actually how you can forget amitriptyline yeah. thank you so what happened to this patient so then in follow up uh, in between uh, initially uh, there were one or two episodes of vomiting and we had advised the above ondensetron fluids lorazepam during the phase of aura so which was very well controlled then in between in 2014 she discontinued amitriptyline by her own so after two months again she had one episode of vomiting and then in 2016 in last follow up she had developed a headache which was hemicranial headache however there were no complete attributes of uh, migraine so amitriptyline is the drug of choice for prophylaxis so that prevention. so for the prophylaxis we emphasize hey, go back to that slide give them proper message Yes. That after the acute episode is being treated, thereafter you put them on amitriptyline. If the episodes are more in frequency, let us say more than one per one month, per month, then you will put them on the prophylaxis that is amitriptyline, yes. and uh, the dose is 0.2 milligram per kg. 0.252. Can build up up to one milligram. One 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 point five milligram. And other important things: avoid fasting, especially during summer. Ramzan ke time mein, especially if it's a Muslim child, you would like to give them fluids. regular uh, ask them not to uh, not to keep the fast regular meals supplement carbohydrates avoid triggers excitement downplay big events and over exertion and sleeplessness yes. has been attributed as a major cause major of precipitation of cyclic vomiting syndrome these are the points so this is the you can go ahead and don't this is a wonderful outcome for cyclical vomiting syndrome but in practice sometimes it is not so easy to treat very difficult what we find is that five episodes a year comes down to two a year even on amitriptyline and we have to keep increasing so we achieve our progress over a period of time people have tried i think he showed propanolol also there are as a medications which have been tried but the evidence experience. is maximum with uh, tricyclic antidepressants and first, the response first, uh, is first level of treatment dr tapa first level of treatment. 2014 2015 i am telling you first line is amitriptyline so far best experience in study if not then you can give propanolol either in combination or separately then newer drugs have come because this is thought to be a mitochondrial polymorphism there are actually you no know, genetic variations in this which have been demonstrated recently it's not only in children but also in adults they have shown addition of l carnitine addition of and coenzyme q which are mitochondrial stabilizing drugs can we also add it we don't have much of actually any side effects so they can be added in intractable cases this is what they has been shown for others like you know barbitone cyproptidine children less than 5 years of age valproate and l carnitine also can be given as has been shown in the column number 3 so these are the drugs but the numbers are so small the, you can see the last three uh, these uh, rows drugs only 6 the numbers 30. are very small So the recommendation as of now 2014 is tricyclic tricy tricyclic antidepressants uh, then propanol can be added in case of not response l carnitine and actually enzyme q10 can also be given 
So these are the so, uh, that is an entity called the hollow visceral myopathy, which uh, personally uh, we have seen and we have selected when I was working in Chelsea and Westminster. Myopathy? Hollow visceral myopathy. They will have and abdominal uh, distension. But yeah, they can just like that, the vomiting is quite intermittent. They will just present like this, whatever we do, nothing can be done. And uh, essentially in these cases, they actually send for electron microscopy to look at the actin myosin filaments and uh, that is problem. Those are the ones who gets better with L-carnitine and coenzyme Q. Absolutely. Once we put them on L-carnitine and coenzyme Q, absolutely fine. You don't need anything else and uh, they stop vomiting. But don't they present with a bit of abdominal distension at least no, during they, those episodes? No, they just present like exactly like this. Recurrent vomiting because it, the vomiting is intermittent. Uh, normally they will have a normal passage of stools but suddenly for some reason the bubble stops moving and they just have, have vomiting. Yeah, it's a mitochondrial. It's a, mitochondrial. Problem. It's a okay. hollow visceral myopathy. These are all just brand names. Go on, next one, next one. Yeah, this is the last slide. This is the last slide, no? This is just I wanted to say in follow-up, uh, despite uh, responding or no response, they can develop pain abdomen or migraine. Okay. So I think this is a good case. See, okay. any child beyond three, okay. Coming with recurrent severe vomiting in the absence of abdomen pain occurring in a stereotypical manner, we have to start thinking about cyclical vomiting syndrome. There are three entities. One is abdominal migraine. The other one is cyclical vomiting syndrome. And the third one is abdominal epilepsy. There is a, there is a foreign thought that all of these three are three different entities but in some way connected to each other. And a lot of the medications used kind of overlap between one entity to the other. And vomiting is the most predominant symptom of this CVS, whereas headache is the most predominant symptom of abdominal migraine, and whereas you will have abdomen pain as the most important symptom of abdominal epilepsy. And invariably, even adult practice, you will see that somebody with migraine is being ordered an EEG and is being treated with valproate chrono. And so these, we are yet to understand a lot, like Dr. Yacha rightfully mentioned, mitochondrial, some of these mutations have been recently identified in a small cohort in about six or seven people with CVS. And at best, right now, we only know how to manage these children with CVS and give support along with the clinical psychologist and pediatrician. It's a very long journey and people have to stick to the same institution and not probably keep going around, understand and have a pamphlet with them so that the family knows to cope with these conditions which are extremely difficult to treat. At the same time, the other message is that we should not forget the other conditions which mimic cyclical vomiting syndrome and we should not prematurely label someone with cyclical vomiting syndrome. Of course, like I said, two years, this history, anybody's guess is it is CVS. No, one, one question, last question. Despite this red banner here, confusion hindi that they should have a counseling from the psychiatrist hindi doctor doctor nahi hai sir wo counseling doctor Sir, sir, I saw that we have a better valid doctor. They will see your degrees. We a better valid doctor. So, what do we say? Sir, I say that but शायद उसके मन में कोई बात है तो ये टेस्ट और ये टेस्ट दोनों साथ में करके देखते हैं कि एक्जेक्टली क्या निकलता है वेरी वेरी प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम डॉक्टर याचा हैज सेड एंड द ओनली थिंग आई टेल देम इज एनीबॉडी हु हैज अंडरगॉन हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन फॉर 20 टाइम्स देयर इज अ 50% चांस दैट दे विल बिकम हैबिचुएटेड टू द सेम प्रॉब्लम दे नीड रिलैक्सेशन थेरेपी आई विल सेंड यू टू समवन हु विल रिलैक्स यू आई बिलीव शी इज 16 शी स्टिल हैज 
headaches she can go on to become a very bad cluster b personality yes, yes, also yes, where yes. she have you know symptoms here and there every okay. time with something some if i were in your daughter's position i would go and meet this girl please go and meet her Haan. so so i think simple thing is i think simple thing is that we have to tell the child our parents that this child needs guidance and therefore go to child guidance clinic this is what we follow in pgi chandra child child guidance because you can't say go to the psychiatrist and so on so forth that way even parents will be a bit furious with you so only say we have to send to the child guidance clinic and all that they